I locked eight of my co-workers inside the Barstool Sports offices for a week. They'll have to live here. They'll have to sleep here. They'll have to compete here. But only one will survive and win the $10,000 grand prize. I'm KFC, and this is season two of Surviving Barstool, presented by Mattress Firm. I had trusted you guys, but there's always, it's always, there's always yeah, this one. Yeah. Yeah. there's the chance. I mean, like, it's a game, and so, like, yeah. you know, it was uh, no secret thanks to fucking Kevin. KFC uh, gave a whole dissertation about why I should be eliminated. Are you sure you don't want to kill me? Okay, on to the next question. Are you positive Rudy should be alive? Last night was great. Uh, we just kind of got to relax and kind of celebrate what we had planned the whole time. This is what, you know, from day two, we had planned it was going to be us in the final four. It, it was a nice moment for the four of us, I'd say, because it's hard to know who to trust, and uh, we all stayed loyal as shit to each other. Live to fight another day making it to the final day of Surviving Barstool. Night four, on to the finals tomorrow. I definitely need a good night's sleep tonight, um, but I know I'm not gonna get it, so. We're on to the last day tomorrow. I'm out of the mattress firm suite, which isn't exactly ideal. Sleeping on this couch, and I turned my neck into an S. So hopefully I can win a challenge tomorrow with scoliosis, first person to ever do it. My first night ever in the Mattress Firm suite. It's uh, it's a great one, I really need it. I've spent four days sleeping on concrete downstairs amongst the mice. I need to get another one of these tomorrow to secure my spot in the finals. And I honestly don't think I'd be able to do it if I didn't have this, so. I'm gonna hit the hay and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning. Last day. <laughs> My sleep was so on junk, bro. I, I didn't know you could dream about sleep. I truthfully <laughs> did not know that you could dream about sleep, and I dreamt about sleep. It was the mattress from sleep. Shout out. I think I hit the REM. You know, at one point I was like, like I, I don't know, I, something came over me and I was like, dude, this is what it's like to sleep again. I had sweet dreams, <laughs> quite literally. I was gonna sleep in the BMD studio again, but then they came home from Great Week, so I just like was like, I'll give them their studio. At this point, I control my own destiny. If I win, I get in. I also think, based on assurances that I've been given, I know Eddie's not gonna put me in. Jackie and Rudy have both given me the word that they're not putting me in today based on me not using the immunity ring yesterday. I went through a bunch of different scenarios last night about who will win the vote. I put together some data points and I'm gonna bust this out if I need to, but I walk through every scenario. So I walk through every juror, how I think they're gonna vote, and first, second, third, fourth, who's the most likely. And then each scenario with Jackie out, with Rudy out, with Eddie out, with myself out. So I'm just gonna do whatever the data tells me to do. Oh and my God! Literally every scenario, who's gonna be first, second, third on everyone's vote. It's just... Can I see? Uh, I guess no. I'll show it to you. It's fine. He did a whole fucking spreadsheet, that robot. He did a spreadsheet. I did pull it all and walk through every scenario, and there's four different scenarios, right? There's four different combinations of who will be up there. Yeah. Rudy wins two of those. Like, and yeah. it's uh, one of them he wins convincingly, one of them he wins on a tie break. There's one where you win in a tie break, and there's one where I win in a tie break. He basically decided Rudy's the obvious choice for the jury. It's, it's by no means like decided, but like, uh, Rudy's name has come up as the biggest threat right now. And I think that that's clear based on what we think the jury would do. Every scenario has played out. I do think that some of these votes could sway based on pitches. All the data that I gave her was correct, but the data where I win is if Jackie's out. Going to this challenge, I have to win. That's the only way that I can ensure that I'll get in the final three. I also, though, my conversation with Che that I just had is making me feel a little bit better because 
Rudy would truly be a smarter chance to go. I kind of feel like, in a sense, he's overplaying right now. Everything I've done from not getting a haircut last week to wearing the specific glasses I'm wearing to wearing the specific shirts that I've been wearing has all been meticulously planned. Today is a do or possibly die situation. I think right now my plan is win this fucking challenge. So going into the final challenge, I'm just trying to be very loose, you know, like water, just flowing. You can't, you can't, you can't break water. I'm just trying to be fucking liquid, dude. You started playing this game on Sunday, you already lost. Step up, find your name, stand behind your stump. Welcome to the final challenge of Surviving Barstool Season 2. We've done speed challenges, we've done cerebral challenges, team challenges. Today we're testing endurance. Before we get into it, we'll talk about last night. I was at the mattress firm suite. Did you unjunk your sleep, Eddie? I dreamed about how well I slept. I didn't know that was possible. Wow. I, in the moment, I felt it. Do you feel like you're a better competitor today because of it? I think so. I hope so. Who was in there with you? Just myself. Just yourself. That's yeah. right. So you were the only one solo this whole week. Mm -hmm. You guys, on the other hand, junk sleep mm -hmm. before the final challenge of Surviving Barstool. How does that feel? Not the best, yeah. but uh, I, I feel good going into today's challenge. We all you're, you're the, the right oldest. to be here. Member. True. You're older than me, right? Yeah, I'm not competing today, dickhead. <laughs> How's that body feeling? You ready uh, for an endurance challenge? Uh, yeah, I'm ready for anything. Eddie, I'm gonna need that necklace back. This is what you guys are playing for today. The most important challenge of the entire season. Throw everything else out. If you win this challenge right now, you win the safety necklace, and you are on to the final three. The rest of you will be up for elimination. Here's how it's gonna work. Step up on your stumps. Stand on your stumps. The last person standing is the winner. It's as simple as that. As you can see, they are carved up in semicircles. Throughout certain time intervals, we will pull away a ring. It will steadily get smaller until only one person is left standing. Pretty straightforward. How much do you want it? How long can you last? The winner of this challenge secures a spot in the final three. On the count of three, get up on your stumps. One, two, three. Begin. Time starts now. Eddie, how you feeling up there? Not great. Jackie, you um, you got big bird feet. Do you wish you had smaller feet for this? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys are up there until we pull away first ring of the stumps. I'm gonna sit down on this comfy, soft mattress, firm mattress, and hang out for a little while. You guys can hang out up there. All right, we're a few minutes in. Uh, the Barstool office is starting to pick up. Everybody else is starting to show up for work. We have our first guest who is gonna join us with some words of encouragement. Oh, look at it, it's Big Cat. He hasn't been in the office literally all week until now. Oh! Wow. Okay. If Jay wants to play a little catch, you wanna play a little catch? Come on, I think yeah, it's a little catch, a little catch, <laughs> oh, 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 no. Jay. Jay. You can't even catch That was dirty, dude. that was dirty. Eddie, you should quit, honestly. I mean, <laughs> dude, don't. <laughs> Save your energy, this is stupid. You gotta, uh... No, this is stupid. No. Hey, just be careful on the way down. I, you're my guy, I'm giving you advice. Like, this is dumb, save your energy. Who cares? There is a legitimate claim to just jumping off and just yeah. chilling out and distracting these guys the rest of the way. Right, you know? just being like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna save all my energy They're gonna be up here today. for like hours. You could be watching the game, popping some snacks, hanging out on the mattress firm suite. I would look fondly upon that. You wanna go bet some horses with me? I, that sounds great. Yeah, why don't we go do it? The track's about to start. Let's go oh, do it. Come dirty. on. It's dirty. All right, I'll get that. That is right. dirty. All right. All right. Out of all the plays Big Cat could have made, <laughs> that is the dirtiest. Oh, man. Okay. Jackie, how are you feeling? Good. Steven, come on, dude. You can't just. <laughs> he's like a dog. I can't believe he gave you the football back. <laughs> dude, he's a dog. Yeah. He has to, he he has has to, to catch, catch a football. It. Could you imagine if he just stepped I mean, off? It, I got to catch that ball. TB12 Maybe would, I'll come TB12 back. TB12 would not like any drop passes. Let me have the ball back. No. Come on. I can't. I can't touch you, you can't but touch I can touch me. the ball. But I can touch the ball. Ball security is job security. 
Well, now he's gonna try to punch the ball. Yeah, now that's well, then, then. Just give me the ball. Just no, give me the ball. No, you can't touch me. Strip him. Can't touch me with the ball. Ooh. Can't touch me. All right, you know what? I'll can't just touch me. Can't here, touch me. Kevin. You invite the next person on. I'm just gonna stand right behind. You. Sure. Anybody else want to step up? Nick, come on down. Jackie. Nicholas. Jackie Nichols. Everything you said has been very dumb. I already know it. Not getting in my head. Say something. No. Kevin. How you doing, pal? I have nothing else to say to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Great work. No, Great right. work, Nick. We'll see, you. we'll see you at the next time interval. You cannot get this. All right. Big thank you to uh, Nick and Big Cat for coming on and doing their best. <laughs> a couple minutes in. I almost won. Basketballs for that. are flying, footballs are flying. Nobody seems ready to give in. All right. We are now two minutes from our first ring pull. If any part of your body touches the ground or any part other than your feet touches the stump, you are eliminated. Are you ready, Steven? Yep. Jackie, are you ready for a pull? Yep. Pull it today, Rudy? Nope. You ready to pull it now? I am. Eddie? Yep. How you feeling? Two minutes to go. About ready a minute for... to go now. Let's pull it. Time for our first ring pull. Three, two, one, pull. All four contestants survived their first pull. I feel like Jackie, I heard like a, a oh, like a sigh of relief. Oh, that was me. That was you? Yeah. <laughs> was it easier than you expected? Yeah, not bad. Eddie, how you feeling, man? Not great. No? Nope. Fugue boy. Is that easier than you thought? Yeah. Yeah? Jackie? Yeah. Did you change at all? Change no. your position? So that really didn't require much from you guys, huh? I changed my position. Did you? Yep. Dogs, man. Big feet. Twenty minutes in. Got a big surprise for you folks. It's the season one winner of Surviving Barstool. Let's bring in Tommy Snake Smokes. Come on down, Tommy. Hold the applause. <laughs> Should we get Tommy? A Tommy Chan going? That'd be nice, but I, I want to talk more to these four. Sure. You four kind of disgust me. You've played the most honest, <laughs> nice survivor game of all time. Sickening. Has the reality set in that only one of you is going to win the $10,000? You're not splitting this four ways. I think they are. I swear to God. I say it every day and they just don't care. Three of you are going to feel really fucking stupid for sticking to this and not playing your own game, not making your own moves. Do you think that by being so amazingly, boringly honest that that's actually going to be an interesting play? Yeah, but who here was the most honest? You know, who here played the best or who, what, what's the jury? Well, I think there's a lot of people saying they're honest. I just wonder if that's the truth behind it all. Do you think you've been honest, Steven? I have been, but I also told one of the competitors that there was a power play coming for her that made her throw away her vote. Was that Tico, Texas? It was. The power Che. Eddie, who do you want to see fall right now? All three of them. One person that you really don't want to win this challenge. And if you like, you know, we're all great. The robot, get them off. There you go, finally, five days in. Does that worry? He might be voting for you tonight if he doesn't want you to win. Have any of you considered a deal of if it gets down to two of you? Maybe, hey, I'll step down. You can win, just don't vote my name tonight. Start negotiating. Something to think about? Yeah, I mean, I'd be cool with that. You want to step down, make a deal with somebody? Hell no. You just want someone else to do it? Yes. All right, good luck. Thanks, Tom. Uh, me. Tommy, 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 Tommy. Thank you to Tommy Smokes, season one winner. We are now 25 minutes in. First 20 flew by that. Can't believe you just said it's only been five minutes. That's the Tommy Smokes experience. Getting hot? Yep. Or are you cool? Yeah, I took my shirt off for that reason. Smart man. Think about taking your pants off? Oh, Eddie boy, how you feeling? Wobble de wobble, felt the split. I might just take a little nap, to be honest. Oh, goodness. Eddie, yep. how you feeling, bud? Not great. No? Mm -mm. Starting to set in? Yep. 
What are we talking? The legs, the feet? Is it still those feet hurting? Yeah, feet hurt. Are you considering calling it? We'll see. 35 minutes in, four contestants remain. It is now time for another ring pull. I'll count it down. You have to survive the pull and continue to stand. Let's do it. Oh, fuck it. Out. All right. Eddie, did you throw it or did you fall? I don't think I, I look at this fucking thing. I just didn't think I'd be able to. Eddie made the business decision, jumped down before the pull. You are eliminated. Got to look out for the ankles, Kevin. Eddie made it 36 minutes in, fell right before our second ring pull. He is eliminated. Jackie Chan, Rudy, still on the stumps. Our second ring pull now. Three, two, one, pull. Oh. All three survive. Che looking a little wobbly. Rudy, pretty solid. Jackie, pretty solid. Che, you were wobbling, but it seems like you found your repositioning. We are now pushing 40 minutes. Eddie eliminated. Eddie, so I, I, I'm still a little unsure. Did you just jump off there or you fell? No, I was I was just concerned when I pulled it that I was going to go down. So you, you, you yeah. just jumped? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, we don't want a torn ACL or a broken ankle going into the, the final vote. Forty-five minutes in, three quarters of an hour, three competitors remain. This is where things are going to get interesting. I got a five hundred for anyone that jumps off first. Five hundred dollar offer for anyone who jumps off. Any takers? Pass. Five hundred dollars. Nope. Do I hear six hundred dollars? Do five fifty. Five fifty. Five hundred and fifty U.S. American dollars, Jackie. No. No. Do I hear six hundred? No, but I'll throw in a no vote. Jackie, thinking about it? Che? How else can you sweeten the pot? I think that's a pretty fair offer. 50 minutes in. This is unbearable. There's no way that's 50 minutes. It's got to be at least an hour and a half. Ooh, cracking. That felt good. You loosen it up a little bit? Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah? I was searching like for that better. crack for like the last 40 minutes. Che, how are you feeling? All the blood is flowing to my penis. Super awkward. <laughs> Jay has said virtually nothing for five straight days and then drops a <laughs> nuclear bomb that his penis is filling up with blood. Jay, it seems like you've been playing with your heart almost in a way, like you want to play an honest game and you want to respect everybody. Are you going to make any snake moves or how you, have you made any snake moves other than the power play? Um. No, like uh, <laughs> that was not very convincing. Well, it's I'm trying to go through the week due to the immunity ring. You know, we all had a an agreement to get to the final four, but as a player, it'd be irresponsible for me to not leverage that. So I did come to agreements, handshake agreements with Jackie and Rudy yesterday that they would not vote for me today if I did not use it, which I didn't, or not use it on anyone but myself, which I did. Handshake agreements. Yep. With Rudy and Jackie. Yes. To not vote. If you are, if you fail this challenge and you are in the vote tonight, I have that already. What are you even doing up there? Why don't you? Why, why, why even the need to compete if you already have this agreement? The, the only two people left are the ones who agreed not to vote for you. Yep. This is a, you know, certainly I trust them and believe that, but it would I be, don't think you do. It'd be disingenuous for me to not give it my all. I don't know. I feel like it's disingenuous to still compete against them because that would show that you don't trust them, not being genuine. Five hundred still stands. I think it was five fifty. No. Oh, back down. It took too long. Steve, Steven. Oh, wow, he's got the cash on hand. <laughs> what? Steven. Press it, press it to pull it out of the pocket. Steven. He's got the money right there. You could buy a nice toy for your least favorite child with that. Maybe buy some love back. That's, that's a fair point. Listen to that. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting a breeze from all that money. Oh, my God. Jackie. Cash money. Forget about winning. You can just get money right now. You could pay for one nostril with this. Wow. Oh. Halfway there. I mean, Jackie got, is doing like a dance over there. We are now officially one hour in. Everybody has spent 60 minutes on their stumps, except for Eddie. He is eliminated in the corner. Eddie, I bet you it's not even comfortable sitting on the stump that long. No, honestly, we were talking about that, how I think these are uncomfortable to sit on. It is worse to stand on it. I can't confirm. Brutal. The only thing 
better is the mattress firm mattress. Everything else here sucks. I'm gonna go uh, take a lap, get a snack, go to the bathroom, drink some ice cold water, hang out in the mattress firm suite for a little bit. I'll see you guys in like, I don't know, four to six hours. Why? It's all, bro. Hey, 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 do not touch me. Don't touch me. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Mmm. Sure. Can't even eat that even if I wanted to. Why? Because my quarterback came back. Don't touch me. Don't touch. Hey, hey. 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 I'm not hey. touching you. I'm yeah. touching the ball. Then give me the ball. No. Did you catch it? I did. I caught one of them. Not the one I wanted to catch. Oh, damn, Dan. These got some oh, kicks. Oh, yeah, right. I've been a mistake. <laughs> I got this delicious. I had a, just a chicken tender from Dan. We're good. Sure? Yeah. You want to bite a bagel? Couldn't Extra even if I wanted to. You want to bite? Couldn't if you wanted to. Why not? TV 12? Yep. Fucking loser. You wish. You wish you had this water now, don't you? That was stupid. Yeah. Let me eat some spicy food in the middle of an endurance challenge. What a dummy. Thank God you're good looking, because you're stupid. <laughs> you want water? Nope. Had plenty before. That's going to mean you have to pee. Peed three times before this. How's your stream? Uh, usually very good, but That's... when you're that close together, it's a little That's tougher. Do you think you got a stronger stream than Jay? I have a very powerful pee I stream. believe you can ask you anyone can ask in the any toilet in the world. Yeah. Are there any people that know? Uh, I think Nick knows. Tommy, too. We are now at the point of the contest where I'm asking people about how hard they pee. Mm. Rudy claims to have a strong stream and says that you two could corroborate that, true or false? He does, yeah. I've never seen it coming from the penis. It could just be that the penis is far away from the water, making it louder. You just blew my mind. Yeah. All I know is Rudy is a strong. I've taken a lot of pisses next to him, and I could always tell a Rudy you stream. A, you have a weak stream. <laughs> I have a week straight. Yeah, you grunted well, out. I pee like every 20 minutes. It's so insane. I can't, not that Whatever much. Whatever that is, out. you should check that he has out. A prostate I've had a, pro the size I've had a, a prostate board. exam before. You need it, like, I, surgery. Have you had a prostate exam? Yeah, I have. How old surprise, were you? It was a uh, surprise like finger in your ass? Well, you I were know, a he was, teenager that got. <laughs> yeah, he was. That is like, ridiculous. You got a prostate exam as a teen. I was like, I got a just being like, doc. No teenager has ever gotten a prostate exam. But also, no teenager has. And then he was asking me about, like, college. He's like, what are you going to study? I, I, yeah, I don't want to be associated with this. Mm. We are now an hour and a half into the final challenge of season two, Surviving Barstool. We are now pulling the final ring for Rudy, Che, and Jackie. Let's get our people into places. The final pull is about to happen. Who wants it the most? Three, two, one, pull. Oh. Fuck. Jay, down. Go sit with Eddie. Jackie and Rudy for the win. We'll see who has immunity in the final challenge. Rudy out here doing some figure skating almost, one-footed. Who's it gonna be? Who wants it more? Who wants it the most? Who wants immunity? Who wants $10,000? Rudy, a lot of wobbling. What do you think? Jackie, you're pretty steady. How you doing? Jay, you look dejected. Oh, oh! Ah, oh. down goes Jackie. Oh. And Victory! There's one immunity for the first time in season two, Surviving Barstool. You have made it to the final three. How you feeling, bud? Finally, I got a win. Jackie, you were right there, girl. You had it. I thought you were steady. What happened? You are in the final. Fuck, that was brutal. All right, everybody, come back to your stumps. Great. Rudy, you have won the safety necklace for tonight's vote, meaning you are safe. Meaning you have a place in the final three. You can head out to the mattress firm suite. Everybody can go relax their feet. I'll see you later tonight for the final elimination. Finally, 
The underdog comes up on top. I was edging all week. Finally busted. This is post nut victory. Back in my room. Thank God, too. So my dogs are barking. I'll tell you what, man. This competition has been a story of near misses. This was the day. This is a shift in tides. The most important challenge, the last chance to get a W, this is huge. Right now, I mean, that fucks me. That was the exact person who couldn't win. I had talked to Che before, and that was the one piece of leverage that I had was that Rudy had on lock, and if they were smart, they would get Rudy out. But now he has immunity, so that doesn't work. So now I have to fucking scramble. I truthfully have not made up my mind. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Here's the thing is, if you say no, I'm gonna try and probably convince Che. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna be straight up. I'm probably gonna try and convince Che that you're the second most liked, so he has a reason to throw you out. I'm mm -hmm. pretty much, I'm dead end. If he goes with you and Rudy in the final, Che doesn't have a chance. And he knows yeah. that. He's done the calculations. He knows that he has no votes. Here's the issue, Jackie. I'm for sure not getting his vote if I vote against him. I don't think I have a chance of Caroline's vote. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm swimming upstream, in my opinion, regardless. Again, I already told you this. I don't know if it's smart, but like, I'm either going to talk like Rudy, you're a threat against Rudy, too. Rudy knows that you're the second most liked. Pretty yeah, the chase. second most liked and shit at the end of the day. No, but it's a chance. All right, no, I'm, I'm truthfully leaving this conversation. <laughs> I, no, I don't. I don't know which way I'm going to go. I but you. like, you did, you did sell your case well. Thank you. Tru truly, so. Okay. I'm gonna have more conversations, and it's like every conversation you have, your brain thinks a little bit more. So you, it's just a massive game of tug of war. Are we good? Okay. Yeah. Just, I don't think you need any convincing, but I did put this together last night. Every juror who I think they're gonna vote for. This list is made by you? Yes. Okay. But this was made last night. Your worst scenario would be me out, your easiest one would be Jackie, but I'll, I'll text that to you so you can look yeah. it over. So the data has been changed a little bit. I need to convince Rudy that keeping me in the game is the smartest play. So I manipulated some cells and changed some answers. The data was already favorable for me winning if Jackie is eliminated. Now with Jackie out, I have changed the scenario to Rudy winning 3-1-1, one, one. Um, meaning that is actually his uh, best play on the board. That was not the case before, but, you know, the data never lies, but maybe the guy who put it in does. And here he is, Stephen Shea. How are you doing? How are Good. you feeling? I feel great, man. I feel fantastic. How are you feeling? Um, pretty good. What are you thinking? Am I the play? You're, I mean, I will be honest with you, there, there is a very strong case for you to be the play. If the vote is me from, uh, Rudy perspective, I don't think that that wins you the game. Yeah, pull up the spreadsheet. I mean, this is all personal data. I don't understand what we're So yeah. Well, that's the, that's the funniest thing about it is that the person who made the spreadsheet is Jay. Well, I'm trying to be objective. Well, this is data from your brain. This is not. Correct. Yes. Yeah. This is not exactly Rudy. I don't, I can't believe we're not, well, we're not getting, yeah. but this is, this is crazy. Here, we, now, like, Here, I know me. we called you a computer, but now this is a step too far. You're literally trying to be a computer. Yeah, I'm not saying that any of these can't be changed, but I'm saying if you're looking at this right now, I think this is an accurate representation of where they stand right now. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, no, I'm not saying that the list is completely ridiculous, but it is from your brain, so I have to, like, sure. question it. This is what I came up with last night to decide where I should, who it would be best for me to let go. You want to say, you want to say any, anything else out of here? I mean, why would I want to sit here? I... This is, I can't believe what this room's turned into. This was the fucking power seat. Yeah. Are you riding with me or are you voting to ride with me? Yeah, okay. I mean, you can only handle so much of a computer brain that it just burns you out. So I just got tired of hearing the monotone uh, Stephen Shea answers. Like, let's just stick to the plan. Let's go Jackie, bring the three guys into the final. And also what I will say, the finalists get to make their pitches and then all of the eliminated guests get to essentially ask questions or kind of make a pitch back. I do have kind of an ace up my sleeve that can torpedo a campaign, and I will use it. You made it, you say it made it seem like this nuclear warhead you have 
is good for me. No, it's not. Oh, I get it now. Yes, it's a threat. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. I read that completely wrong. Yeah. As far as this nuclear arsenal you have, convince me that that's not a bluff. I will tell you what it is. Okay. So I have your word already, you're not voting for me, but I'm giving you this as assurance. So if I show you this and it's real and it makes sense, then you give me 100% assurance that you are taking Jackie out. Sure. Okay. Yes. Shake on this. 100%. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's an email from myself. Steven, does this email exist? Yep. Clue number three. So, I destroyed clue number three. So the threat would be that I'll have to pin that on you. So it would piss people off. So I think it would be wise to just vote Jackie and make things clean, but I'm just laying out all the information that you should know before making your decision. If I take out Stephen Shea, I believe the council will love me for it because he is the reason they're all gone, and I basically get to kill the villain that hasn't shown himself. Even though he hasn't lied, it's almost worse. He's like talking to a fucking mainframe. I got a bucket of water and a robot that's begging to get wet. All right, so how are you feeling? Um, good, how are you feeling? Good. Um, you know, I, want, I want that honesty right now. I think that you two are the favorites, and I'm not really sure where he's at right now. That meeting was a little dicey where it looked like it was me for a little bit and maybe it's not and maybe it is i'm really not sure that's my honest answer yeah um it really comes down to like what he decides i gave you my word and i plan to honor it if you're in the final you have my vote i think right now there's not much time left i think i mean i got to make my place i'm gonna go talk to rudy yeah i'm sure you respect that yeah of course he's still talking to the cameras but i appreciate the honesty Che obviously knows that me, Rudy, and him have an agreement, but like he also knows that we're trying to win. Che is the one who's been preaching honesty, not us, so I can see why he wouldn't really trust us. So, I mean, where's your head at? Uh, my head, I think, is still on Stephen Che. Voting. Voting Stephen Che. And are you are you telling me that? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, guess I have no, you have. I have honesty, legitimately I no reason yeah, to lie. Yeah, you have no reason. To lie. I have no reason to lie. The other problem too is if I keep you, then Che votes for you. But Che, I'm gonna cross, I've told Che that I would cross him. So he would. He's still gonna vote for you. No, I don't think he will. Yeah, he will. Will he? Why? Because he's, he's not a human being. Yeah, I guess it's not, I mean. But that still is a scenario where I could still win. Yeah. Everything I am doing in this office this week is to win the game. I, in the process, I am making friends and, you know, enjoying the company of my coworkers, and I would expect that, and all that is genuine. But the conversation is steered by winning the game, and that's what I'm gonna do. Welcome back the fifth and final elimination of surviving Barstool. You know the drill. Put your torches down, find your stump. Final four, the four horsemen. As you can see, the council has grown by one again. Grace, the newest member, after a four to one vote, you join Tico, Kim, and Caroline as the council who will be deciding who wins the $10,000. How you doing? It's a game. Yeah, that's right, it is. Um, it's the sixth sixth day at the office. Are you sick of it yet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rudy, were you hanging out in the mattress firm suite today? I was. Kicking your feet up after that last challenge? Yeah, it was very nice. Good. So, up until now, at least as far as we've seen, um, you guys have been this unprecedented, big, happy family. Has the family vibe dissipated a little bit. I think it's still pretty good, but like we kind of know at the end of the day, like one of us, like not Rudy, but like one of us three is not going to be in the finals and that stinks. But at the end of the day, this is what we signed up for. Um, not all four of us can win, so it's a business. And Rudy, are you, uh, I mean, you are 
sitting pretty right now. It's got to feel unbelievable. Uh, yeah. But were you a part of a lot of the discussions still, and strategizing and whatnot today? Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously don't have all the power, but I have a lot right now. And um, I, I gave everyone an equal fair chance to make their case, and I listened to all of them. I listened to multiple at the same time. I heard everybody out, and I had a lot of things thrown at me, a lot. You said you were taking pitches from people solo, double. Are you overwhelmed with these pitches? Yeah, it was a lot of information, and like I said, I don't really have a lot of bandwidth, but uh, I did my best. Big to... word, that was good. Yeah, I mean, Stephen Shea provided me with an Excel spreadsheet. True. Um, so that was a lot of data to take you in. You fucking nerd, unbelievable. Yes. What did you see? You created a, an Excel spreadsheet of what? Uh, yep. All the Every various. Every juror, how I think they're leaning, what are the scenarios with if the, if these people go, how the votes will stack up. Because at the end of the day, like, we're all a group. So last night I have to prepare, okay, who, what's my best case scenario? I generally didn't know. So I had to kind of plot it all Were out. Were you making and I pivot tables and whatnot? No, no pivot tables, just kind of a uh, bunch of information that would reveal in each scenario who's likely to win and by what score. And obviously people can be swayed with the jury, but as of where things stand right now, that is how I viewed things. And I don't think any of it, even though it was from me, I don't think any of it was fabricated or made up. I think it was. Whoa, that legit. was weird to just bring up out of nowhere. <laughs> Nobody asked you about that. Do you think that all, <laughs> you think that those spreadsheets were true? Well, Stephen Shea is an interesting subject because if it came from anybody else, I'd be like, oh, that's really convenient. You made a spreadsheet that uh, has multiple scenarios in which I win. Yeah. Um, including the one where you're safe. Yeah. But, Funny how that works out, huh? But Shea is an uh, enigma. Yeah. And when I say enigma, I mean that he is the human body embodiment of a microchip. Yeah. He's a robot. So. He's an android. Uh, sometimes I want to like rip open his skin and see if there's like blood in there or just more electronics. It's so, weird. It's like some yeah, my robot so shit. So it was a mind fuck because he seems incapable of lying. So there is a, a, a place where he does actually make a spreadsheet. Yeah, that does seem true. It's also just kind of weird to be sitting here and be like, and that none of that was fabricated. It was all true. Yes. Well, as far as like who I think would get the votes, like it was consistent throughout the sheet. Do you think that he put every scenario into that spreadsheet? Do you think that was a full scope of what could happen? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. It was one of those scenarios where it's like, good for you, man, I ain't reading all that. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, did that spreadsheet really sway you? Uh, did you take was, the time to look over it and think of you know, what he was showing you? I read the sort of the spark notes. I just look at the, where does Rudy win, Rudy win, Rudy win? Okay, cool. Did anybody else see the spreadsheet? I talked about it with both of them too. I briefly heard about the spreadsheet and then when I saw them in a room together, it, like I figured he was pulling out the spreadsheet, <laughs> doing the whole board meeting thing. And I was like, well, that's good because I don't have, I was just getting on my hands and knees and begging. So that was kind of like a tough thing to go up against. Was that your, that was your uh, approach? Just get on your knees, pray for Rudy? Kinda, I don't know. What did you say? I mean, you'll see. What was your pitch to Rudy? We were just one of the original people working together, and it was just kind of where I was thinking, like, hey, you know, well, that's just... More like a heartfelt, like, we're bros? Yeah, that was really it. Like, yeah. we just, like... We, we, bros over hoes type shit? We kind of did. We just looked at each other, like, yo, you're Humans like, over robots? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Humans over robots. We just literally, like, we're just like, yo, you're my guy. I was like, you're my guy, too. And that was, like, that was it. I Do you think know. that was genuine? You think that it worked? I don't know. I just maybe I should have pulled the fucking palm pilot out of my ass and started poking numbers. Cause <laughs> I, that's like if Rudy, if Eddie pulled a palm pilot out of his ass, would it have helped? Yeah, that would have been. I would have looked fondly upon that. I was waiting for someone to pull literally something out of their ass. <laughs> Didn't happen. Uh, was there a human side to your argument, or just straight? Yeah, numbers? I mean, at the end of the day, we're playing. Uh, in, in a game where only one individual wins. Like, we're not splitting any money. Like, it's four people, one person's gonna win. At the end of the day, the deal we cut with Jackie was we would get her to the final four, and if she made the final, any of us would vote for her that were in the jury. So, you know, I've been riding with Eddie since day one. I've been riding with Rudy since day two. I've been riding with Jackie since day two, but like, because of the agreement, I'm gonna uphold that. So if Jackie's in the final, she has my vote, and I'm gonna do everything I can to ensure that she wins. And, you know, I have some tricks up my sleeve. And, you know, I 
laid out everything. And you know, at the end of the day, it's whatever. And I understand, like, we're going to leave this and we're going to be fine. Like, I'm going to be cool with Rudy, like, you know, when I see him again on Monday. But um, you're looking more... frustrated, Jackie. Well, just normally I would love to hear that. But like right now, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all playing an individual game. Whatever makes sense for Rudy is what he should do. What you just said there, does that confirm that you're voting for Jackie over Rudy or Eddie when you're, if you're on the council? Yeah, I mean, I think that she knows that. It's more of just like a, Eddie and I have been aligned since before this competition started and we kind of downplayed our friendship to make sure that we could you know, fly under the radar. And, you know, when this alliance took place, then we became, you know, a foursome. So there's the four alliance, and there's kind of just two, some alliance here. We've been working together for weeks. And have you guys known that? I did not know that. Are you just finding that out right now? Mm-hmm. How does that make you feel? I don't, I don't care. I got the necklace. Yeah, I mean, we were... <laughs> yeah, if you we didn't were, have the necklace, I'd give a big, I'd give a big fuck. I mean, we were all a team, like, once... We were all together, but yeah, it started with well, us. Well, yeah, you're a team, but you have this other secondary team that kind of seems like it's taking precedence if you've been hiding it from everybody else. Yes and no. Everything I've done this game has been for the benefit of this team, and they know that. Eddie, how safe do you feel? It's, uh, it's tough to say. Uh, I, didn't, I had the worst performance today, so if you base it off that, not safe at all. So, Rudy, in this little position of power that you have, have you, are you making a move to try to win it all right now? I mean, at this point, any move I make will be considered a move. And the same goes for them. Everything that they talked to me about was definitely a move. There were threats, spreadsheets. What was the threat? Uh, it was a heavy, heavy threat, uh, akin to the Cuban Missile Crisis is what uh -huh. I felt like. But wow. um, Blockades and everything, huh? Yeah, but I think that, you know, it's sort of the obvious answer. I'm, it behooves me to do the thing that will give me the best chance to win in the end. What was the threat that was said? Uh, well, it was sort of ambiguous, um, but it was described as a nuclear warhead. By who? Um, well, typically, Jay. computers control warheads. <laughs> <laughs> Can't trust them, I'm telling you. Y2K, man. <laughs> um, Jay, why do you think Jackie should go home? Um, I think if she makes the final, that she'll win pretty handily. All right. Let's get to our votes. We'll find out who is in the final three and has a chance to win $10,000. Eddie, we begin with you. This is obviously the toughest one I've had to write yet. It sucks. It really sucks. I think I just won the game. I'm so sorry I have to do this. I have to sit my own ass. I'm picking this person because I think it gives me the best chance to win, and I like to have a little thrill. Come on. Yeah. All right. Inside of here are the votes. You guys know the drill. We're going to count them up. We'll find out who's going on to the final three to compete for $10,000 and who's going to join the council to decide who wins that $10,000. Is everybody ready? The first vote. Jackie. With the smiley face, or a frowny face. The second vote. Stephen Che. That's one vote for Jackie, one vote for Che. The third vote. Stephen Che. That's two votes for Che, one vote for Jackie. That means 
If this vote is for Jackie, we have a tie. If this vote is for Che, or anyone else for that matter, you go home. Mm -hmm. the final vote. Stephen Che. Sorry, man. It's all me. You did too much at the end. Sorry. Robots will take over one day, but for now, oh my God. humans have won. Sure. How are you feeling right now, Che? You looked over to Eddie immediately. Yeah, I mean. You, um, you said you were working with Eddie the longest. Yep. Yeah. Surprised? Yeah, I mean, we had an agreement to go, you know, never vote for each other. It's a bummer. I get it. I didn't expect it from him. Um, that was a bad move by Rudy, because I'm full team Jackie now. She did everything she, she should win this game. Like, she played, she's done every move correctly, and Rudy's got a lot of explaining to do, I think. So you're, you're more angry? Or oh, I'm not angry. I mean, whatever, I was... whatever emotion you might feel. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, bummed towards out. Rudy is in instead of Eddie. No, I mean, I gave Rudy the threat, and I'm fully going to follow through on that. But I mean, uh, I promised Jackie my vote, so she has my vote. And as far as my line of questioning, stay tuned. All right, please go get your torch. Bring it over here. gave your, your speech there, but any final words before we extinguish your torch? This was fun. It's the game. We got to where you needed to with each other, so I understand it. It's the moves that you guys felt was in your best interests, and at the end of the day, we played as a team, but now it's singles, so congrats. You guys win the finals. Pack your bags and get the fuck out of here. Wow, a lot of dramatics, fireworks flying. I, uh, I would venture to guess in the history of game show competitions, that was one of the bigger blind sides. I don't think he had any idea that was coming. What do you guys think? Kevin, I'm playing a win. I hope everyone here sees that. So uh, that's a move that was uh, trying to win this game. And uh, I, t I take it serious. And um, like I said, I'm trying to win. So I hope the jury sees that. And um, that's all I really have. You two um, were supposed to not vote for him, right? After mm -hmm. your agreement? Yeah. Did you guys talk about that together? Uh, no, that actually didn't come up. Really? I mean, you both just decided, well, like, fuck I it. I said it to Eddie, like, I don't, like, I backstabbed him, so it gives him less of a reason to vote for me. I mean, you have to make moves in this game, and, you know, if you want to win, you have to be aggressive at some point. And that's pretty much the only thing Fact. there is. I mean, you guys, it was definitely, uh, you slow played it for a while, and there was a lot of half measures and a lot of friendly, a lot of friendships, but when it came down to it, shit finally got dirty. All right, Rude Boy, uh, you had the safety necklace for this vote. That's now over. I'll take that back. Because now it's all in the hands of the council. You guys are the final three. Council will decide which of you wins season two of Surviving Barstool and takes home $10,000. All right, grab your torches and we'll see you guys back here shortly for the council vote. You are dismissed. say that was fun. Nope. No. Um, Eddie stabbed me in the back. I think it was really foolish, honestly, from Eddie's individual game perspective. Eddie, I had no idea that you guys were plotting together. That wasn't easy. It sucked, but 
I don't know, he just kind of started doing too many things at the end there that I thought were unnecessary. I know a lot of people might be shocked and, you know, mad about it, but at the end of the day, like, I really want to win this. Him making that play with Rudy and Jackie, him telling Rudy today about the nuclear war plan, I was like, well, what kind of plan does he have against me? I was sort of the driving force on that, and I did go across my word and backstab Che. I told him I wouldn't vote for him today, yesterday. But the crazy thing about that is that he proposed that deal to me. Rudy went back on his word. So yeah, I mean, it sucks. Do I think Jackie's gonna clean up? I just fucking did it, bitches. I don't know how I pulled that off. How do you feel? I mean, I'm just happy I made it to the final three. Like, I didn't think at all I was gonna do it. Yeah. I'm proud of myself. Like, I, everybody in this office come up to me and be like, I thought that you, for sure, were gonna get played like a fiddle at yeah. the start. And I was like, I just, Gave Eddie my pitch. If you don't get on board with this get Che out train, then I'm gonna try and get Che and Rudy in on a get Eddie out train. And I don't even know if it was that. I think it was also just like, it's time to spice it up a little bit. He played an outstanding game. There's no question about that. And to be honest with you, Che is probably commanding the conversation in there like he did with us. He's gonna try to like cancel me somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be fun. <laughs> The thing is that, yeah, he will try to like lay out his, you know, strategic points and probably present a spreadsheet or some shit to them. So if they vote how I think these games should be played just based on performance, I just don't see how anyone could vote against me. Unfortunately, part of this game is lying. I really only did one epic betrayal and it was to the one person that I think the council will look fondly upon because he's the reason that they're all sitting there and they're not here. I lived in the chaos. I thrived in the chaos. I know how to chill in a pool of chaos and just flow. I don't even know what that means. All I simply did this whole time was go against people who were going against me besides my last move with Stephen Che. It's very hard to predict the council. I'm taking basically an educated guess. There is a very good chance that they all just vote for Jackie because she's a girl. That makes almost zero sense to me because she betrayed them. I was in a tough position. There was a lot of gender talk. I get how it looks from their perspective. I wasn't in that room with me, Che, Eddie, and Rudy on that second day. My game plan here in this jury is to talk about how I played the best game because I did. Overall in the game, I think I played the most complete game. I deserve to win because I've actually played a great game and I'm still here. Sucks we can't chill in here anymore. I know, I would love another. I mean, this is this is like so four sweet. times the size of my apartment. I know this is. Yeah, best man or woman wins. Yeah, and uh, props to you guys. Yeah, congrats. We'll see. It sounds like we got a cold war on our hands. You feel cool about that line? Yeah, it's cold. <laughs>
If this is a gender contest, I definitely won't win. But if this is a contest based on who played the game the best, I should win. The reason why I think I should win is based on the second day, hours before the elimination, a move I pulled that changed the entirety of everything. When you guys were in the green room, which was my bedroom, you guys might remember that I came in there. You guys were having a conversation, it was the five girls. And at that time, I had talked to you previously, Caroline, and you, you floated a couple names out there. There was uh, a thought between splitting votes because people thought Tico had an idol, and there was a lot of conversation. Shortly thereafter, I find out by placing my phone on my pillow, I recorded your conversation, and that's how sure I've been this whole time, and I knew that you guys were plotting against me. There was uh, a plan to take out the three guys with me being the first one, Che the second one, and Rudy the third one. Naturally, I had to gather the guys and I had to formulate a plan to keep us there. So that's exactly what I did and I knew I had to take one person with me to the four. That night, I got three votes. My ass was on the line. I was dead in the water if I don't do what I did. Jackie was the best option because you guys were obviously so tight to the hip but regardless, I understand it's all in the game. Much like I had to do the move I pulled, which is gather everyone and take these four and make a final four. That whole night changed the whole scope of everything. If I don't place that there, it is all five girls at the end, and I'm not sitting here right now. So I went from being the first boot to potentially winning this show. I also bookend that whole, bookended that whole move with taking out the cyborg, okay? That was the only dirty move I pulled because for the simple fact, all four of you voted for me on the first night, so I never double-crossed any of you. Needless to say, I think I played the best game based on those two moves. If we're voting on gameplay, I just don't understand how I would lose, but you guys will all make your decision. One more time, it's been a great week. I've been with Barstool for nine years. The first six, I worked for free. I scratched, I clawed. I did whatever I could to get myself hired full-time here. I finally did it in 2019. And much like I did in the first six years, I'm gonna scratch and claw to hopefully secure a win here tonight. And I just hope you guys give me a chance. Rudy, the floor is yours. Um, <clears throat> first of all, that was a good speech, Eddie. <laughs> Hard act to follow. To start my speech, um, I don't have a great memory, so that's why I wrote it down, as you guys could tell in the memory challenge. Um, but uh, my main point is that, as many of you know, and Kevin uh, pointed out for ad nauseum for minutes on end, that I was a massive threat. Um, and people around the office, even before the show started, would always say to me, oh, you're, you're the biggest threat, like you're the favorite, like you're the most athletic. Immediately I had a target on my back. To be totally honest with you, the only way I saw myself winning was to win the final challenge. If I had not won that final challenge, I would have gone home. If I don't win the log challenge, Che sends me home, or these three send me home. And that was when the pressure was on most, and I had to show that I was gonna show up and win. And a lot of people have said that Che has controlled this game, and he played a fantastic game. There's no arguing that. He pulled moves that I could not have pulled. And without Eddie's wiretap, which you can argue the um, morality of, um, we're not here, and that plan I was a part of, but I really did it because I realized at that moment that I could then use Steven as a meat shield. He was the one in the front calling the shots, and he did a beautiful job of that, but I realized that if I use him to get far and I win that final challenge, I could then take him away because he, in my mind, was the biggest threat to the jury, as he pointed out. So not only did I do really well in the physical challenges, but I also played a very strong mental game, in my opinion, and I hope that you guys feel the same way. As you guys know, uh, Steven has threatened me with um, trying to cancel me or something. He has a nuclear bomb that he will play. He told me this today before the vote, that if I voted him out, he would have no choice but to use this against me. And for reasons I can't understand, he did show me what the threat was. And he gave me his phone, and what he showed me was a picture of the third clue, which was news to me. And as you guys remember, when Steven found the ring, I was very upset because I felt that the second clue, which I told all of you guys about, I was very open about that, I was very upset with how the clue was written because I think it didn't make sense. 
And then fucking kill you. Steven comes to me and says, Fuck I will pin this clue and tell them that you found it. When he gave me his phone, which I don't understand why he did, <laughs> he sent himself an email with the picture because he deleted it. From Stephen Che to Stephen Che, having the immunity ring might make you a winner, but in order to get it, you must be a sinner. Which makes a ton of sense because the Vegas Golden Knights are in Las Vegas. <clears throat> it makes a ton of sense that he found it because he had the third clue. If Eddie had found it, he also had that advantage, which is something else he lied to you guys about. In addition to that, taking out Steven, I think, was a big play and something that you guys should all respect. And at the end of the day, this is a competition. I played the game the way I could win, and I hope you guys respect that. And I had a ton of fun with all of you. All right. Rude Boy has said his piece. Jackie, you are the third and final contestant still in the game. The floor is now yours. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about gender and all that. Me going with the guys, I know how that looks to you guys. I guess I just want to explain my side of that. First of all, obviously, they came to me with a great pitch. At the time, I didn't think I could really turn it down because A, that puts a target on my back. B, I heard their pitch, and if it wasn't me, it was gonna be one of you guys. My also thought process was, if it was us five girls, including, at the time, I didn't fully trust you because we had had that little thing. Now I do, because I see that you were actually for the girls the whole time. But it was five girls, which means three guys go home. And that's assuming that three days, nobody turns on each other. Then at that time, I'd won two challenges, so I figured I'd probably have a big target on my back and I'm probably the first to go home if we have not had any other pack within them. That's just a lot less than what the guys offered me and I knew that once I could make it to the final four, that I would actually have a chance at at least the final three. So that's why I went with them. It had nothing to do with gender. If any three people would come to me with that pitch, then I would have taken them up on it. Like it was an offer I couldn't refuse. I honestly don't even know how I'm still here. I don't really think that anybody expected me to be here. The fact that I'm here next to Eddie, who's been at Barstool for God knows how long, like Rudy, who everybody thought was gonna be the winner. Like, I've been dodging bullets left and right. I think like in terms of gameplay, I was so lucky to have them come to me, but like I've made the smart moves. I mean, the fact that I'm here is kind of like proof enough. Like I, I literally had people coming up to me in the office being like, I did not think that you were gonna make it past the first, like, whatever, which I was like, you don't need to tell me that at all. But they did, and I hope that you guys don't think I was, like, going against you. I hope that you know my position. I'm so happy to have gotten to, like, know each and every one of you, but I guess that's just, that's my pitch. All right, we've now heard from the three final contestants. We now turn it over to the council, in order of which the people were eliminated. Tico, the floor is yours. All right, <laughs> let's get into it. <laughs> hear he, hear he. It's time to convict. The men ran this competition, so y'all think y'all hot shit? Y'all schemed and you lied just to make it to the end. You might win surviving, clearly lost a few friends. <laughs> Heart of gold let me down. How could I trust a chick? who is in love with Clancy, who clearly doesn't give a shit. Tried to give power to the girls, so I was put on as a threat. Che said, Tico thinks like us, eliminating her our best bet. Rudy played me like a fiddle, while Che held the strings. And of course, Jackie turned. She don't believe in anything. You made me a deal, and of course, it wasn't real. You were never a team girl. You work for all men. Girls, can't you see? She was never our friend. <laughs> the guys used their logic. The girls used their heart. Emotion and paranoia, guess that wasn't very smart. Eddie was my guy. So sad to see it turn. I ain't throw your name in first. In the end, you will learn. This feels like a scary movie. How y'all killed me off first? To let Tommy Smokes down really made my heart burst. Che used trust against me, promised me he wouldn't vote. If you were stranded on an island, motherfucker, I'd sink the boat. 
Did it feel good to lie? To pretend we are friends? I guess robots can die. Ain't no heart in the end. <laughs> and although you're out, still doesn't feel great. To be in a room with you, turn to be my worst fate. Kim, you were a joy, <laughs> but never a threat. Caroline, you stay loyal. You gain my respect. And thank God for Grace with her funny ass jokes. We all played a good game, although at our throats. We bonded through trauma throughout this whole thing. We laughed and we cried. We all did our thing. No one will understand all that we went through. One hell of a week and one hell of a crew. But while I'm not in the finals, hurts more than a stain, but we'll never be the same. That damn immunity ring. I'm not leaving with 10K. All that's here is regret. I had so much potential, definitely stole the show. How far I could have gone, I guess we'll never know. And sorry, Mama Tico. I know you wanted me to win, but I got shot by a robot before I could even begin. <laughs> I ain't get the money, although that was my plan. But I did learn, never trust a goddamn baseball fan. <laughs> Bars. Bars. Absolute oh, bars from Tico, South Texas. Five, South five. Bars. Wow. Unbelievable, Tico. All right. Um, Kim, you're right. That is a tough act to follow, but yeah. the floor <laughs> is yours. Content Kim. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. And all of you stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to read it. When the cast list was announced, people said that I was a no-brainer. To be carried to the finals, I didn't need the money, and I was clearly not gonna win any of the challenges. What people did not account for is that the rest of my castmates were all born with oxygen deprivation, and at this stage of their lives, are closer to jellyfish than fucking humans. <laughs> Rudy, your brain is a perfect wrinkleless orb. It's ironic that it looks like a crystal ball because you couldn't see into the future how big of a mistake it was to send me home. You're like a golden retriever. If they made a biopic about your life, people would be thinking they were watching Airbud. Froggy <laughs> Airbud. Jackie, you make Rudy look like Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> And since there's 0% chance that you know who that is, he is a chess player. And since you probably don't know what chess is, it's a board game. And since you probably don't know what a board game is, it's the emotion people feel when you are speaking. And Eddie, of all people, you are who I am most disappointed in. If anybody asked who the least threatening was on the show, they would have answered me. It was such an easy, simple softball question that you could have asked it on the Dave Portnoy show. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Che, you're not in anymore, but because it's just a game, you are making 61 years of affirmative action seem like a mistake. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm, I am one second away from texting my son-in-law and asking him politely to buy Barstool. <laughs> I will fire all of you in a snap of a finger, except for you, Rudy, who would finally achieve your destiny of being my cool boy. <laughs> so fuck you all. Yes. <laughs> I mean that. I generally, from the bottom of my cold black heart, despise you all. They say only the good die young, but I'm praying to God that he makes four exceptions. <laughs> Oh, wow. shit. Incredible. Two for two. Two for two. Unbelievable oh, job. They call her content Kim for a reason. <laughs> okay, wow. Gross. <laughs> All right, Caroline. Okay, man. Um, so similar to Che, I also had a quick little um, Excel sheet, and it just says, lying horse. <laughs> um, that's what you all are. 
so uh, I just got a few questions. Um, this felt a little like high school, felt like maybe there was a clique that we couldn't break into. And I will start over with Jackie. You voted off all the women. Oh, yeah. OK, great. That was your first question. Um, Rudy, you kept a lot of secrets. Do you think you're better than everyone because you do crossword puzzles and speak in a non-animated monotone? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's my worst quality. Eddie, how do you sleep at night knowing you absolutely betrayed your friend and have no loyalty or moral high ground? <laughs> Fair question. <laughs> he was, uh, he played a good game. I also want to defend myself to Eddie. He said that he had the least amount of trust in me. So I guess I, I definitely understand the wiretap, and you heard me say that. However, the next day, we did say that the trust was new because we voted for Kim. We rebuilt the trust. And you worked for this company nine years, and I've worked for this company one month. And you never allowed me the ability to get trust with you. Man, I know you guys like already did your things, but it's hard to vote for any of you guys, honestly. Um, I hope you guys feel really bad, um, and I hope you guys lose a lot of sleep. Caroline has said her piece. Grace, you're up. I'm gonna keep this quick. Tico stole my whole poem thing, so that sucks. Um, basically, I just don't understand why you guys would not compliment me while you're standing up and giving your speech. I, like, really am at a tie for all of you, and I really just needed, like, a good... You were really funny, so I would have loved that. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say. All right. Robot, the floor is yours. I'll start with uh, Rudy. I just wanted to tell you that the nuke was you, like, this is not a game of challenges. This is a game of surviving, which you've done a good job doing. In order to win, I think we have a pretty, a pretty split jury. For you to spend so much time in your closing arguments, focused on me, I feel like was the nuke because that kind of took away from your accomplishments, which I don't think outside of challenges were many. I think you have the best personal relationships with everyone, but as far as playing the game, I think you did the best in challenges, but I am struggling to pin something on you to be like a genius move to win this game. I think you rode coattails. I also, I also rode your coattails by design. I see, but that, I don't think you ride coattails to first place, in my opinion. Eddie, I have some questions for you. You certainly, hands down, biggest move in the game was the phone recording. Without that, maybe one of us is here, and it's probably you. Explain to me, look me in my face, and tell me why you did this to me, because we were riding to the end, yeah. and we had an agreement. Che, towards the end, I just felt like you got, you overplayed a little bit, man. I, I really did. You made that deal, hey, don't vote for me, and I won't say your name towards the end. That left me exposed and put me in a possible tiebreaker situation. Second thing, you talking about uh, an atomic bomb versus Rudy. I sat there and I was like, oh shit, what does this guy have against me? As, as your ass got on the line this morning, or this afternoon after that challenge, just felt like the cyborg was programming into a nuclear, nuclear level. It really did. I was riding with you, till about an hour till the end, man. Okay. Um, Jackie, in season one, Kelly and Brie got close, but a woman has not won an individual Barstool reality show yet. We have a jury of four women. I just wanted to ask you a question. What it would mean to you, you would just need two of these four votes to win. What it would mean to you to be the first woman to win a Barstool reality show. I mean, I think that the fact that you guys have been running the show from the start, which is impressive, but I think like if I end up winning this, like a girl comes out in the end, that's awesome. Strategically, you played a great game because you use, and I, I said you guys like use me socially, like say, say you're gonna plot against us. And like, it wasn't necessarily an honest game, but. <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't necessarily an honest game, but I think you did a great job manipulating people to get where you need to be. And I just want to congratulate all of you guys on playing a great game. And I think all of you guys deserve to win. All right, it's now time for the council to vote. You guys will be writing down the name of the person you think deserves to win the grand prize and be deemed the winner of season two. Tico, we're going to begin with you. Do your thing, girl. This is gonna be really tough. They all deserve to win. This is 
car. All right, the council has voted. It's time to count it up, see who's gonna win the $10,000 and be crowned the winner of season two of Surviving Barstool. I'm gonna read them up, find out who wins. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I have no idea who's gonna win. I really don't have any hope. Come on. All right, inside of here is the winner. Season two of Surviving Barstool and $10,000 courtesy of Mattress Firm. Let's get into it. Just a reminder, these are votes for the winner. You want votes. Vote number one. It's for Jackie. One vote for Jackie. Vote two. for Eddie. One vote Jackie, one vote Eddie. Vote number three. Pivotal vote here. Could potentially put you one away, $10,000 and the crown. Jackie. Two votes for Jackie, one vote for Eddie. Rude boy still on, not on the board. The fourth vote goes to Eddie. Two votes for Jackie, two votes for Eddie. Rudy, you have officially been mathematically eliminated. If this vote happens to be for Rudy, we will have a 2-2 tie. If this vote is for anybody other than Rudy, we have a winner. Final vote for season two of Surviving Barstool. For the win. All right, bang, bang, Eddie Farrar. You are the winner of season two of Surviving Barstool and $10,000, courtesy of Mattress Firm. Eddie, nine years at Barstool, six for him, for free. Got some back pay, I guess. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars in one in one week. You're finally the star, babe. How you feeling? <sighs> Crazy man. It was uh, it was nuts. I don't think any of us seemed like. What was it, like Wednesday-ish or Tuesday? We were all just like losing our minds. Like the paranoia was just really setting in. Jackie, you were right there. I honestly, heading into it, truly, genuinely, before that speech, I thought it was yours. Um, you were right there in a, what would have been a major upset. How you feeling? I mean, I'm, I think I'm just as happy that Eddie won. Like he, even that speech, like I, that kind of swayed me. Like I, I'm just, again, I'm just literally happy to make the final three I'm happy for those two votes. You did your thing, girl. Rude boy, um, the vote didn't go your way. You did make it to the final three, though. How do you feel overall about how it went down? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I obviously would have liked to win, but you put it all out there, and sometimes you just don't win. But uh... if we had a season one scenario where it was a tie, it would have gone to you for the final vote. Who would you vote for? I mean, I kind of knew that it was a wrap after Eddie's speech. It was unbelievable, and um, so I, I, with that speech, I'd, I'd have to give it to Eddie. No offense, Jackie, no, you played I, great, I, but I would, yeah. 
Jackie probably would have voted for Eddie, knowing Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable. He played, a, he played a fantastic game. And yeah. You earned it, bro. Flew in and did your thing. Take it home to Chicago with you. So, congratulations to Eddie Farrar. He is the official winner of season two of Surviving Barstool. You're walking home $10,000 richer, courtesy of Mattress Firm. Thank you so much for making it happen, and we'll see you all for season three next year. Eddie, I think you deserve to win because you talked to me and I think everyone, trying to feel everyone out, but you gave everyone a chance to participate in your alliances. It was really a hard toss-up. I think they all did a really great job. Um, but Jackie texted me right before I got voted off and that was the only person who gained my trust, so she is my winner. I love you, girl. You're awesome. You played a great game, but you didn't know what the fuck you were doing, baby. But Eddie actually played a really good game with that with that sneaky attack, and uh, that's that's the way I'm playing it. She played the best game at every turn, day after day. She did what she needed to do to survive. She was smart. She was up front. She was nails. I didn't win, but this person should. You were the only one that didn't lie to me. The only one that played an honest game, really until it mattered when you took out the cyborg. You're not just Dave Poitner's lackey. You're a villain, and you deserve to win this game.